long been a connector of cultures. One that feeds the body in its barest form and fuels camaraderie on a higher social level. This season, we explore the role of food in our Asian culture in connecting people and forging friendships. We flew in Michelin-starred chefs from Singapore and Bangkok to be part of our Malaysian eating cultures and share with them our dining scene, both street and fine. We call it here in Banji. Well, this one has a chewiness. Very well done, very well done. To exchange and learn how differently we eat and, more importantly, how much likeness we also share. This is Chef on Chef 3, Crossing Borders. Breaking into the scene in 2012, Cantaloupe has been a steady favourite for date nights and special occasions for KLites. It's just a stunning site, it's a beautiful building. When you open something, I need the space to talk to me. I'm not a designer, but you know, I, I want to go into a space and, and, and go, this is something else. Cantaloupe at Troika Sky Dining, co-founded by Chef Christian Bauer and partner Eddie Chu, has always stayed relevant with its food thanks to Chef Christian's respect for simplicity when it comes to ingredients. I have one philosophy to every dish, and, and it's a bit like when you have a play on stage or a movie. You can only have one star. As I get older, I want to make simple food again. In the kitchen, Chef Christian runs a tight ship. You can always tell a well-run kitchen by... You just need to look at it. If it looks like ballet, everyone is moving around nicely. No one bumps into each other, there's no panic, that's a good kitchen. And on this ship, his right-hand commander is chef de cuisine, Megat Cairo. Right, five, five for start. That's the, that's the real man in here, see? He's the one who runs this restaurant. Today could just be the day Chef Christian's kitchen is put to the test, as they Hello. receive Chef Jeremy Gillam of One Michelin starred at Jag Restaurant and Chef Paul Longworth of One Michelin starred restaurant Le Rhubarb, both of Singapore. First impression of the place has them impressed. Hopefully they'll like the food just as much. It's time to find out. It's showtime. Welcome to uh, Cantaloupe. Thank you. Azik will be uh, attending uh, your table tonight. Uh, we have a special menu for you. Chef Chris will uh, come to uh, explain to you dishes by dishes, and I hope you will uh, on the, enjoy your, uh, your table tonight. You're looking forward. Thank looking you. forward. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye. Thanks. Right, listen. Don't throw out tonight. We have a business start coming to it, so we give a good one. We yeah. yeah. good. Chef Christian starts his guests off with a rich, sweet oyster velouté made with oyster stock slow simmered gently for an incomparably sweet reduction. And what I have here is grated horseradish. It doesn't really make it spicy, but it gives a sort of different dimension to the soup that I really like. So I'm going to boil this for about 10 minutes. But of course what we want here is just the flavour of this oyster. All the vegetables, all the oysters. Here, that's only the base for it. Now we're going to start all over again. The actual soup base. Nice big tablespoon. We're basically using the fennel seeds to enhance all the, the aniseed flavor of the fennel bulb. So that's ready to be strained through our really fine strainer this time. And there we are. That's the basis for our soup. Carefully add the oyster. Just before serving, the soup is enriched with cream fresh and fragrant soft comfy fennel bulb. Two plump oysters are delicately heated in the soup to just plump them up. You take that many oysters just for the, 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 the taste of it. And this card is very old school. It's, um, let's see, um, plate, let's see what it tastes. Yeah, let's see what it's like yeah. on a plate. You know what would be good? A bit of bread. Oh my god, why have they not been served bread? It is a prerequisite. Why is there no bread out there? Guys, what's... 
Everybody gets bread, but my important table gets nothing. Isn't that SOP number one? Bread, water. Chef Christian and team unfortunately stumble a little upon takeoff. Undiscouraged, they regather themselves and proceed with the first course. Thank you. Chef. Someone just got fired because of the bread. Oh, I'm uh, bringing it back. No, it's, it's okay. SLP, you know. You were, you were just seeing it. <gasps> The most important thing is the customer's journey through the restaurant. From the time that they come in, reception, that they walk in, that they sit down, that they get bread. So, chef, tell me more about that dish. It's just oysters. Oyster stock. Um, we don't do it very often because, you know, it's quite expensive to do. Uh, two types of oysters. For the oyster stock, we're using a Japanese oyster because I like the idea of the, the higher iodine. And then for this one, it's a fin de clair. Nice. Well, the dish looked very nice when we plated it, but apparently our waiters cannot carry it out without the thing collapsing. It looked so nice. All the prawns, they when I go out there, that. It smells great. I'm, I'm looking forward um, to the horseradish and the different levels of flavors on it. So, bon appétit, Jeremy. Bon appétit. Merci. Thanks. Testing. It's like pretty rich and like this um, was thin. I like it, but I feel the fennel very present on the on the dish. Always difficult when you when you cook fennel, mm -hmm. you lose that aniseed, that fresh punch, big hit of fennel. I also don't get a big hit of the horseradish. But personally, maybe grate a little bit of horseradish on top to to just kind of yes. accentuate a little punch. But at the end of the day, I think. I think he nailed the soup. Things are off to a great start. You see, one of those yeah. things about the horseradish yeah. uh, and the fennel is one of those strange things. I didn't actually want to give it a lot of, there's a lot of fennel in there, but you know, I don't want to give it too much of it. It's one of those things that when you, when it's in there, you might not notice it, but once you take it out, you notice that it's not there anymore. Do you know what I mean? Then suddenly the flavor profile goes a bit flat and it's not quite the same, so. For the second course, Chef Christian serves up olive oil poached sea bass. It is served with a light fume cream sauce made with the same fish stock, naturally sweetened with root vegetable julienne. I use chicken stock to make fish stock. I don't like the idea of making it with a with a fish fumé, so, and I find that it has to be very light. So we've got the usual carrot, celery, leek, onion, and a bit of fennel. No clove, a little bit of thyme maybe. Now you're supposed to leave that just under the boil. Off we go, strain, strain, strain. Let's chuck everything in. Don't worry, we're gonna double strain anyway. As you can see, there's hardly any cream in any of these recipes. All this modern cooking. <laughs> we need to boil this down until it's thick. Two fillets of sea bass are poached in olive oil at blood temperature to preserve its natural juices and sweetness. For a little colour, the final plating comes topped with more shredded root vegetables. This time, deep fried for a crunch. He's, a, he's an extravagant chef. You can tell in his personality and the cooking, he seems to show and reflect that. My first impression of the dish is it's gonna, it's missing acidity. I, let's see, I'm interested to try this dish. Don't clean it, it's just salt. Go. Okay. So let's see the sauce. For me, this is going to be a very tricky dish to, to get right. Uh, it could be very too heavy, it can be... It's creamy, it's something like I was, I was saying, and, uh, uh, but... In, in my little opinion, I think it's, it's perfect. And it's a very small fillet, so it can overcook quite quickly. Yeah. I think some pastis in this would be very nice. <laughs> uh, some some noily prat, some ricotta, some perno, or some some kind of alcohol to give it a freshness. It's not as rich as I thought it would be. They kept it quite light. 
Yeah, but it's a, it's a blast from the past. I haven't had spaghetti or vegetables like this yeah. for a long time. <laughs> 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 Me too. But it's, it's well done. Vegetables are so... Uh, this for me is probably the, the thing I don't like. If anything, the deep fried uh, vegetable on top. They like it and are beginning to get acquainted with Chef Christian's style of cooking. The next course is Chef Christian's iteration of a surf and turf. Seared salmon fish served with oxtail stew. The wild Scottish salmon just got off the plane and made its way to the kitchen that morning while the oxtail stew has been slow cooked overnight for meat of incomparable tenderness and stew of blooming fragrance. There's something deeply satisfying about making stew. Whether that's a, a lamb stew, a beef stew, an oxtail stew, it's just the kind of the basis of all our cooking is stewing. And now we're going to use we're going to use the beef fat that you have in there now and we'll fry all our vegetables. The more you brown a vegetable, the more caramel flavor and color you're going to get from it. So that goes back in there. And oh, and here's one I made earlier. This one we didn't buy, we made it. It's a beef stock. Because I'm going to pour the wine in here so that I get all the bits and pieces, all the juice from that, and it goes in there. And then our herbs, thyme. This time I'm gonna use only thyme, kind of a bit more thyme. And what we're gonna do when we're finished with this, we're gonna take the oxtail out, we're gonna shred it all, we're gonna separate it from the sauce, and then we mix just enough sauce into that to get a meat sauce emulsion, which we'll use under our fish later. We're going to fry the fish. So this salmon now is actually still raw in the middle. And that's what I want. For a touch of lux, it comes with a slice of foie gras, lightly seared just to brown the surface. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's a, a, a curve ball. I didn't expect that, to, to be honest. I mean, when you ask me what it is, beef, um, maybe, I saw the braising, I thought oh, also buku, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, beef yeah. bourguignon, um, it's oxtail clearly, salmon and foie gras? Salmon, yeah, three, three flavors, very... Uh... Not, not, not three things I put together personally, but... Well, I think the main course probably would have done three dishes out of it. It's too extravagant. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Chef, the, the, me the, the menu has just yeah. taken a yeah. massive... Uh, a turn. You're going crazy. You turn it up, full, full work onto like plus 10. Salmon, foie gras, braised oxtail. Why is that idea? What's the inspiration behind okay. it? The inspiration was anger. <laughs> okay. You know how you get this, you get guests in the restaurant that say, why don't you do this? You know, why don't you do that? Why don't you do this dish? So I had a guest who came in and said, why don't you do surf and turf? You know, you should really do surf and turf. So I was, of course, you smile and say, oh, yeah, good idea, great. And then you go back and you're like, surf and turf, I hate surf and turf, I hate it, I hate it. And then I was thinking, why don't I do surf and turf? Right. It's good. Chef, so. thank you very much. Thank you. It's very so. pure protein. We should eat all together, so. Yeah. Okay, Is that the deal? The It's going to take them a while to eat that. <laughs> Maybe we should have made it even smaller. This is a dish that should really be two bites. And I know it. Why didn't I do it? It's one of those things where you're, you're old enough to know, but too dumb to actually do it. It's not bad. Interesting to see um, the flavor of the beef. Salmon is, is overpowered the foie gras and the beef. is still the main present. Has been cost. What do you, I... what do you like? I think it's quite tasty, I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. I mean, like, it, it's like a the, Rossini, you know, you put the, the best of the best together, like, yeah. um, but would I put it on my menu? Would I cook that for someone? No. Yeah. But it's tasty, and you know what? Credit, is, I, I can eat it. It's, yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a, again, the, the, the beef is tasty, the sauce is... Salmon is well cooked, beef is well cooked, 
foie gras as well cooked. But at composition where we get a very heavy flavor and miss some some balance of all uh, all of that dish here. I'm agree with I'm agree with that. If you have to um, use the same produce, what do you would like to do? I would do three different dishes, <laughs> <laughs> probably. It's work, yeah, but uh, yeah. One, one of them is too much. It's, it's, it's not about much. flavor, it's about yeah, understanding the, the, the... Trying to showcase each ingredient effectively. Mm. Can keep that three element to, to do different things, but means more complexity from uh, Outer element, more garnish. I would love to have uh, some garnish with that dish. A few vegetables, maybe. A few vegetables, maybe. To just again refresh. Chef Christian might have risked too much with his portion and flavors, but that's just a testament to his belief in being generous when it comes to hosting and feeding people. Sorry, food is uh, is about we sharing some some feeling and and envy. Now, to be honest, this one I don't get it. But uh, <laughs> this is pure anger. Love it or hate it, it's good to see the personality definitely. of the yeah, chef yeah, there. Definitely. This is, this is what, he, what he's like and uh, I, I personally can't fault that, to be honest with you. We're on the we're 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 same page, I think, with this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes, I tend, I tend to do that. You have to do that. You have to, if you make something, you have to believe in it. But what I like about, I like to make dishes that people love or hate. For a sweet end, Chef Christian is proud to unveil a silky smooth chocolate and pistachio terrine. A recipe he says came to him in a dream. Said, I, I woke up one day and I had dreamt this recipe. Now, I may have read it and then re-dreamt it, I don't know, but I've never found another recipe like it anywhere. The non-baked dessert is merely whipped from egg, cream, chocolate, sugar and pure pistachio paste and chilled overnight for an indulgent sweet that is rich in flavor, yet surprisingly light in texture. Adding a touch of acidity is a passion fruit mascarpone cream and berry coulis to lift the creaminess. Oh. Hello again. Hey, chef. Bit of desert. Do you, do you steam this one? Or just call this kind of ganache? It's a weird thing. You know, to this day, I'm convinced I dreamt it. You basically pour just boiling cream into a mountain of cocoa powder. And gravity. And gravity, gravity sets the whole thing, right? Genius. Yeah, it's very rich. That's why we have a bit of um, uh, passion fruit mascarpone cream. Okay, so more like a creme patissier? Uh, mm, a bit. A yes. bit, okay. And the puree? And then that's just a, a coulis. Uh, raspberry, blueberry, coolie. Right. Awesome. And a couple of fruit. Thank, thank, you, so thank much. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. To enrich the experience and flavors, the chefs are each served a glass of Martel Exo Cognac, a robust cognac that will match the fragrant chocolate and nutty pistachio in the dessert. Yeah. Oh, well, Jeremy, I've had a fantastic, uh, amazing trip yeah, to KL. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing us along. Exciting uh, to see all that and uh, pretty well. Uh, beautiful company, thank you, Jeremy. Cheers. Cheers, Santé. As I said, Santé. Mm. Nice balance and smoky palette on the end. Not too heavy, woody, and so that woody and smoky make your balance uh, proper. With the sweet, chocolate, it match sweet, perfectly. Sweet enough to. Should be very nice with the chocolate. Yes, enjoy. Bon appetit, Jeremy. I like the effect of the passion fruit, um, some roasted almond and, and the cocoa cream. And cocoa is well balanced. You have the bitterness with the acidity match very well with the cognac. And when we see um, yeah, cognac, chocolate, yeah, match all time very well. The cognac, the chocolate is perfect. The, for me, the passion fruit is enough. I don't need the coulis, I don't need the berries. Um, the balance, the balance of the flavors is is actually perfect. If I give to you, uh, I would say that what I had to eat in Malaysia the past two days is uh, more than on par with what I have to eat in Singapore. So I like the I like the effect of uh, that cocoa, uh, interesting with a, with a cream. Uh, the texture is, is pretty pretty well. 
Uh, passion fruit, same <coughs> light, uh, not too heavy, since it's mascarpone and everything, but pretty light. The texture is a bit fluffy, matches very well with the cognac. Um, I don't go for the for the frug. I think it's over sweet the the plate, and I think the frug and the coulis is, is good again. But that two combination of passion frug and uh, cocoa cream with pistachio, uh, some more nuts here yeah, will be uh, very interesting on that dish. I I, I agree. I think it's um, the chocolate ganache is fantastic. It's rich. It's luxurious. It's bitter, not too bitter, sweet enough. Passion fruit. As English, you like castor. I like it thick. <laughs> I like it thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it runny. Um, so I like that. And, and I think that it's just some macadamia, some pistachio, some nut in there just to, yeah. to, to give a little bit of texture and to link with, uh, with, the, with the drink. But very, it's, and because it's been left to gravity, I think, you know, bravo. It's, uh, no, that's right. So, it's yeah. done well there. Cantaloupe at Troika Sky Dining proves how and why it has a secure spot in the hearts of diners from KL and beyond, even after all these years. Uh, I'm very uh, happy as well to see how the Kuala Lumpur develop his restaurants and uh, different restaurants, uh, different table, pretty impressive, and the culture of the food growing uh, to, to Kuala Lumpur. Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. It's good, Chef. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Uh, well, Cheers. Merci. Thank you very much. That thank was um, that was a lovely journey. Yes. Well, thank you, Chef. Thank you. Some great experience, and I was sharing. Uh, I am happy to you bring me back for some uh, pasta cooking oh, yes. way, and <laughs> and as as a Normand, uh, mm. I'm originally from Normandy, so uh, that cream sauce and everything was lovely. Uh, some point with Chef Paul where. Uh, we are a bit more audacious on the on, on the main course, mm -hmm. but point the beef great, the salmon great, the foie gras great, mixed together, uh, less not understanding. <laughs> not not. <laughs> Congratulations, you have a nice place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chef Christian Bauer's ever-evolving skill and style is a legacy that he is generous enough to pass on to new chefs who come under his wing, all for the love of good food. In the next episode of Chef on Chef 3, one of Kuala Lumpur's oldest and most enduring French restaurants, Lafitte, in Shangri-La Hotel Kuala Lumpur, has the privilege of hosting two Michelin-starred chef, Emmanuel Strubon of Saint-Pierre and Shukuva, Singapore. It's difficult to judge a colleague. It's very difficult to, to be outspoken about somebody, someone else's work. What does the decorated, award-winning chef Emmanuel think of Chef Scott Henderson's classic French food that has garnered the approval of the likes of Malaysian royalty? Okay, it's not a fresh live scallop. And for all the chef watching this show, I think it's very important that we sit down and we taste our food like a client would eat our food. I'm confused, it's only crab and sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel. Drink responsibly. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Chef on Chef. First Class is giving away dinner to two lucky couples. So if you would like to experience the food here at Cantaloupe, please log on to firstclass.com.my to win.